Hello, it's Talking Transfers. It's John Gibbons with the Liverpool Echoes, Paul Ghost. And we're here uh, for another edition of this show where we bring you all the latest on the ins and the outs at Anfield during this transfer window. And where I wanted to start, Paul, was an article that you wrote yesterday uh, for the Liverpool mm. Echo uh, where you talked about Liverpool's cursed week, is, is what it's been called, and how it might... <laughs> You know, it might affect a little bit of a change uh, in Liverpool's sort of policy around around this window. Um, I mean, on the the curse week thing, first of all, like it it was a bit of a strange one, wasn't it? You know, I mean, I'm sure Liverpool have had more disastrous weeks in their history, but it did. You know, when when it all sort of came out on, on Monday night, you know, the, the, this idea of, of defenders in particular yeah. sort of dropping like flies, and you know it. Less than ideal preparation and a team that he wouldn't have necessarily predicted, I'm sure, in the summer, he'd be picking second game of the season. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't me calling it the curse week. I no, it was in quote marks. Yeah, I had a few people on Twitter saying, oh, you're complicit because you're calling it a curse <laughs> week. And it was Klopp who, who yeah. called it a curse week, didn't he? By, what did he say? It feels like there was a witch in the building. Essentially saying that, you know, whatever could go wrong did. And I thought the most telling part of it all was the fact that Liverpool didn't release any training pitches last week. Normally you get them three times a week where oh, okay. you're looking on Getty and you're saying, well, maybe Cater's back in training. I didn't see Thiago, you know. It's just the little things that you look for um, and supporters are, are just as eagle-eyed as the journalists yeah. that, that they'll spot it themselves. Um, Liverpool normally put a gallery on their mm. website and, and there wasn't any at all last week. So that was a little bit of a pointer to maybe one or two things aren't quite what they should be behind the scenes and then Klopp. So, um, didn't delve too much into it, did he? But he said it feels like there was a witch in the building, and then when you see the team, and there's no Firmino, you know, Joe Gomez is only fit enough for the bench, no Naby Keita. Um, the fact that he didn't get on as well tells me that there was probably something still up with him, given the fact that there wasn't too many attacking options, was yeah. there? Um, and the, I, I, I had a, someone messaged me actually on the, the Monday, Monday afternoon, saying, um, have you heard anything about injuries to, and then give me a list of about five or six. And I thought, well, I, th I think that's just typical scaremongering that you get on the day of a game these days. It seems to be a fan base that's still scarred from that 2021 20, season yeah. when they were springing up left and right, weren't they? So I didn't actually think too much of it. And I'm thinking now I definitely should have made more of that because as it turns out, Gomez was only fit enough for the bench. We knew Mata probably wasn't going to be involved. And then now Phillips starting his first Premier League game since May 2021. Um, there was talk of Henderson as well, even though yeah. he do a short time. Yeah, is yeah. What he decided. Henderson could only play half an hour or so, couldn't he? And Nunes picked the, the wrong time, didn't he, to get sent off? So Liverpool might be heading to Old Trafford without any strikers. You know, hopefully Firmino is back. Klopp said he should be back, but we know sometimes with these kind of things that um, Liverpool play it down, don't really give you too much on it. And then before you know it, they've missed three, four weeks. So. Um, We'll wait and see, but yeah, certainly um, things were far from ideal behind the scenes. Actually, we spoke to Van Dijk after the game, and I said, "Well, your manager's just said there that um, a little bit of a, you know, cursed week. You know, given what he said, um, was it a difficult week behind the scenes? And didn't really bite on it too much, but he said, "Well, a little bit, but we can't use any of that as an excuse. We, you know, we should have performed better and, and so on. So he wasn't using it as an excuse, but I certainly think that um, you know whatever could go wrong did essentially last week." Yeah, absolutely, and that's, we ended up in a sort of a situation mm -hmm. uh, where we weren't able to perform at our best, although they started well, which is which yeah. is a funny sort of thing, you know, about that game. But but drifted out of it. Palace obviously get the goal. You know, the man gets sent off, and then after that, it is going to be very difficult. And so, so do you think it will make them more tempted to, to go in? You know, I don't think it's going to be a, a seismic shift. You know what I mean? They're not going to. I don't think Liverpool Football Club will ever go from. We're definitely not buying anyone to, to suddenly getting someone. So if they were at that position, then they'll probably sort of stay there. But if there was temptations, you know, and, and football fans and football people, we always talk in absolutes, yeah. don't we? Whereas, yeah. whereas in reality, you know, the situation was probably always a little bit more fluid than that. You know, it'll always be a, well, we're, we're happy with what we've got, but if something happens, you know, or if, or if there's changes to a player's situation, then, then we are sort of willing to, to, to make a, a little bit of a move. I just wonder whether all this um, just pushes them a little bit more towards the idea of, OK, well, maybe we'll be even more tempted to do something if, if, if you know, the right player became available. Yeah, I mean, Klopp was saying before they went to Thailand, uh, if everything stays as it is, then we're probably going to be done. And you could understand that stance. I mean, a lot of people have been calling for the midfielder all summer, but you could understand where Klopp was coming from when he's got everyone fit. But since then, Thiago's pulled up, 
Oxley Chamberlain's pulled up Curtis Jones. All right, the Reds, to enjoy the rest of this video as well as all of our premium content, just click on the join button below and join our YouTube membership. You'll get all of our exclusive content, including our match previews, our post-match reaction, our exclusive interviews, and all the transfer chat about who is coming in and out. So yeah, share the journey with us, supporting Liverpool from the heart of the city. We're home, we're away. Come and share it with us, up the Reds.